I bought two handheld mice, a vertical mouse, and a space mouse because I want to see if any of these might help relieve some of that strain that happens when you work on your computer for a long time, especially when you're doing something like 3D modeling where you just have constant repetitive button presses. I never used to have to think about how much time I was spending on my computer, but a few years back I started typing a lot of repetitive sets of numbers at work, and that's when I first experienced some irritation and twinges in my fingers from all those little minute traumas all day again and again, the same patterns. So now I'm spending even more time on my computer between video editing and especially 3D modeling now. I'm working in Fusion 360, so I have a lot of these same sets of button presses that have to be used to work in the program. So now what I'm trying to do is find some ways of reducing the number of button presses and then also see if there are different products I can use to kind of change the positioning and see if I can make this all just a little more comfortable and prevent it be from becoming more of an issue in future. This is the mouse that I have been using, which is just an Amazon Basics mouse. I have no problems with this. It just is starting to hurt my hand is all. The first things I want to check out are these trackball mice. This is a handheld track mouse that has just the three buttons and the trackball. So it's a very basic design. It's just powered by USB. So I'm going to plug this in and it just installs its software automatically. I will say that the trackball on this feels a little bit loose. I don't like that it has give, you can hear it rattle. I'm able to navigate, but I think that this would be pretty difficult to have to use for kind of precise motions. The other problem with this one, it doesn't even have a scroll wheel, so I can't even zoom in and out easily using my mouse and keyboard. So I think this one's a no-go, but it is nice if you are just say traveling, you need something very small and you're not gonna have a place to set your mouse, then that could be useful if you're just needing to maybe go through documents. So the next one's kind of like a level up from that mouse. This is the air mouse and it has a few more buttons than the other one. It's also a little bit larger, so you can get a bit of a better grip on it and it is wireless. This one, the ball in here is a little bit better set. It's not so wobbly, so that's nice. We do have a scroll wheel now it is battery powered, so you have a battery compartment in here, and that pink ribbon just keeps wanting to stick out. I can't seem to get it tucked back in properly. Let's plug in that USB, and then switch this to the on position. So this button is for the laser pointer, which I have no use for, uh, but the other buttons, you have your left click, right click, tracking ball, and then you've got more click, buttons here. I think they just do the same thing, although maybe you can program them. I'm not sure. So let's go over to the computer and see how well this one works. So if I want to try this in my design software, I can position this reasonably well, especially I think with some practice. So if I want to click and drag a folder, that's completely possible, no big deal. Set it down, switch over to typing. And pick my mouse back up. Yeah, I wouldn't want to try to draw around anything precisely with this, but it's doable for simple stuff. So this is not too bad, but again, I just, I don't feel like I can get the accuracy with the trackball, especially in a handheld, and having to set this down to go to the keyboard, it's gonna be pretty annoying. So next mouse, now this one's pretty cool. The vertical mouse is kind of a whole different beast. So instead of having my hand flat like this, it completely rotates the position. Now, if you stand with your arm by your side, you know, it's gonna naturally be like this. So lift your arm up. That's kind of, it seems like the more natural position versus having to rotate it like this to use a standard mouse. So I think that has good potential for relieving some of that strain because it's an effort to turn your hand there and it puts some strain I can feel on this muscle. So you just have to install the battery. And then this is also where the USB is located. I find this kind of difficult to get out. There we go. Got your on switch here. Plug this in. The buttons, the uh, noise level isn't too bad. It's pretty much what I would consider a normal mouse click sound. 
nothing crazy, but not super quiet either. Of course, now I have full mouse function. The only difference is that it's just oriented differently. So I have my backwards and forwards buttons here, my scroll wheel, your normal left and right click. So I can zoom in and out, navigate just fine. Although it does take just a bit of getting used to because the motion is slightly different at this angle. So then you can also remove this palm wrist. I've personally found after trying this a little bit that I like it without the palm rest, but I like to use my mouse pad that has the wrist rest. So that's a good combination for me. The main problem here though, is that this just doesn't fit my hand very well. It's okay for a little bit, but after I used this for a few hours doing some 3D modeling, my thumb started getting fatigued. And I believe that it's because if I rest my hand in a comfortable position, my hand is kind of too far open. It's not in a natural position for me. And using the vertical mouse, you do use your thumb. So a standard mouse, I could rest like this. I could use this pretty fine without even using my thumb at all, but you can't use a vertical mouse without your thumb. There's nothing to get leverage to press the buttons or to move in this direction. So that's something to consider with this, but maybe again, if you have a slightly larger hand, this model could be just fine for you. For me, I think I would need to have something that's narrower and probably shorter would be nice too, because really it would be more comfortable kind of if my hand were up a little bit higher. Overall, I do like this. Now keep in mind with the vertical mice, you can't use it for left hand if you wanted to switch back and forth, actually use the mouse with both hands, depending on which hand is more tired. So it's not ideal for me that I can't switch it over to the left hand, but because it's different ergonomically, it may be that my hand won't get tired and I won't feel the need to switch over. Now the next one is a whole different beast. The 3D mouse is not a replacement for this type of mouse. This is used in conjunction with a standard mouse when you're working in programs such as 3D, uh, Fusion 360. It's not compatible with every 3D modeling program or every the graphic design type program. So you do need to check and make sure that the programs you're wanting to use this in, whatever you use in your workflow, that this is gonna be compatible with that before you get something like this. So this is just the 3D navigation control without all of the extra buttons. You do still have two buttons here though on the left and right. There are also small ridges here so that you can uh, correctly orient yourself uh, with front, back, left, and right. This is quite heavy so it stays in place just fine. It doesn't slide whatsoever. It also has a slightly non-skid uh, kind of rubber piece on here. So it really sits comfortably and then it's just a very gentle touch that's required to navigate through your model. Before plugging in the mouse, you do need to go to their website and download the drivers for this. And then there's also a training tool in there so you can get familiar with it before you jump right into your modeling program. And I've left the vertical mouse plugged in also because I'm gonna be using those together now. So this is the setup that I'd be using. I've got my space mouse here for my left hand and then my standard mouse and my right. You can also swap it, but I can't with this one because this is a strictly right-handed mouse. So if we go into the 3D modeling workspace now, I no longer have to use the scroll wheel to click and move. I can use the space mouse for all of these functions. So the way that I have it set up, I can of course turn, but I have pushing down to zoom in, pull up to zoom out, pulling backwards to move it down, up is pushing forwards. And these are used in combination also. So you can kind of go diagonal in and out at the same, or in and around at the same time. And then of course I would be using my mouse to make my selections. The buttons here are useful, just press it to bring up the menu. Here you have, when you're within Fusion 360, you have a few commonly used tools, but then you can also go over to properties. Here you can change the speed that everything moves. So if you're having trouble with getting lost, you can make it slower. I've found it most comfortable right around there. You can change what your buttons do. I'm just leaving those as the defaults. So in the advanced settings menu here, you can see each of the different motions that this um, device is capable of, and you can change what direction 
means what basically for example right now left and right moves the piece to the right if I press this way moves the piece to the left if I press this way but I can reverse that so now if I push that way it's like it's moving the camera that way and then I'm just gonna put that back because that's not how I normally work you can also change zooming in and out whether it's forward or backward up and down I changed it so pushing down zooms me in pulling up zooms me out but you have those options here in this menu and the options are different depending on what program you're in if you head over to Photoshop and you press that same button um, you can change those uh, selections but they work differently since this is a 2d program so on here I'm just kind of twisting to or pushing down to zoom in and out still um, but obviously you don't have the uh, orbiting so when you're zoomed in you can kind of pan left and pan right pan up and down this does also work in Microsoft Word you can well, I'm just twisting to zoom in and then I can see scrolling down is tilt right now so Anyways, those are things you can customize. Again, just depending on what program you're in, it will change those settings. Uh, the other useful, oops, let's get out of that. Another useful button on here, your right button is going to give you some view options when you're in Fusion 360. So you can go straight to the top view. You can, if you get lost, you can zoom to fit it seems to think that's fit right now because I have this other object that I created and then I go right view if I want so that can be helpful just instead of having to go all the way up here and choose that from your your block menu up here so it's really a very light touch that's needed and of course the more you press the kind of the faster you go based on your uh, base settings and your uh, speed there also of course so if you're tilting, that's leaning the whole entire wheel here, and that's going to be your orbit. You can also slide to move it, dependent on the settings that you have. Tilting away and towards you, I mean, all of these things can be used in combination. So you just have to kind of find your groove. We're back to that top view using the shortcut menu. The way that I have it set up now is intuitive for me just based on the software that I have been using the muscle memory that I already have because you can change those settings for which buttons do what and what direction takes you where you can customize that to whatever you're used to to help re reduce that learning curve it's also kind of silky smooth when you're moving with this I can only imagine once I really get like a full grasp on it how well it's gonna move around I think it's gonna be a lot better now if I didn't have any concerns with like pains in my hands, then I probably wouldn't bother. I would just stick with what I know and the equipment I already have. So it's kind of just like this type of thing is an extra if you don't need it, which it could probably still be quite nice because it is such a smooth way to navigate. But if you're having concerns with either current pains in your hands or you're worried that you might start getting this type of irritation, then that could be something to look into. Or if you wanna go all out, you can get the full pad version with all the keys, which to me is a little bit excessive, but if you actually use it, then maybe it's worth it for you. In the meantime, uh, let me know what are ways that you found to modify your work area to kind of make it work better ergonomically. I'm sure that everybody else would be interested to hear that in case they're having the same types of issues. I certainly would like to hear. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.